there must be a de-escalation of the current violence. The United States should... We... The 2024 Republican presidential <laughs> primary field is taking shape. The battle lines are becoming clearer, and so is the field of candidates. Is the odds on favorites, if you look at the polling, still Trump versus Biden? That seems to be it, but it's just way too early to tell. I'm more angry now, and I'm more committed now than I ever was. Big challenge for these candidates is going to be how do they navigate Donald Trump? And, and how do they navigate Ron DeSantis? You and I have a rendezvous with destiny. Welcome aboard the Ruthless Variety program for a big show here on Thursday. We have had uh, some serious times lately, but we're going to attempt to have some fun because the world needs it. Yeah. Frankly. Plus a lot of like idiots like Ed Markey are showing their ass. That's a thing. And oh, boy, oh so boy. So unbelievably good. For, Look at that asshole. Yeah. For, for so many days of just like horror and tragedy. The one tiny silver lining is a bunch of horrible people have shown themselves to be completely horrible people. Yeah. And that's a prime example of it right there. It's, well, a, it's a problem when, like, Antifa GPT writes your talking points. Yeah. You well, know? <laughs> Honestly, the best point is, like, you see you see Marky. That's the senator from Massachusetts, one of them, who, who sounds like an absolute idiot being like, after terrorist attack, do nothing. But you see Elizabeth Warren behind him. Just like, I'm not going to say it. Yeah, dude, Single that's the best part. Elizabeth yeah. Warren's looking over at you, and she's like, Oy, yeah, I, that might go. Hey, buddy, when Elizabeth yeah. Warren's like, you may have gone too far. <laughs> I, I mean, it, it is fascinating, though, as we're seeing it in real time. And we, we've seen this for years, really. But, you know, the institutions in this country, major corporations and Democrat politicians yes. have been entirely captured by the radical elements in their Slack channels and yep. their congressional mm -hmm. offices, these like neo-Marxists that run yes. their entire lives. And until they read the talking points or they realize they fucked up. Yeah. Totally. You know? And it also occurs to me at how isolated their actual silos of information must be. Totally. Right? Where the guy, the guy shows up on stage as people are watching horrific video of mm -hmm. beheadings of babies and rapes and murders and kidnappings and it, like the worst the worst what you would previously as an american think impossible that a human could commit to another human this guy's like well geez guys uh, let's not overreact yeah. Yeah. let's not overreact to all of this and a really interesting thing that uh, i saw i can't remember who maybe it was nick carter on on twitter who had the take of like um, exactly what both of you folks said, where for so long we've gotten used to, like Duncan said, the left has completely cap uh, captured institutions like academia, yeah. and especially the discussion on social media, because you know Twitter used to essentially be, if you're not pushing dem talking points, you'll be labeled misinformation and banned and such. And like uh, you, you know, Holmes says, seeing all this horror, I wonder how different the situation would be if Twitter was under the same management yeah, as you before. Wonder. And it would, they're like, okay, we will only allow whatever talking points that like Rashida Taleb is cool with and like our BLM advisor says is okay. Yeah. And we would only see a completely one sided take of like, you know what? Uh, actually, terrorists are freedom fighters. Yeah. Like that kind of take. I, th I actually think that's probably true it's in, just horrific. in many regards. But you know, I mean, look, like credit where credit is due, you actually have journalists on the ground there. I think we said this back many, many months ago when CNN was in their previous management. And like, if you take their domestic coverage out and you actually let their foreign policy correspondents do their job, I mean, we were in a, in a debate Monday or Tuesday about whether or not the things that we saw with our own eyes were actually mm -hmm. true or whether they were propaganda online. Like mm -hmm. people were, were saying all of this. And then you had guys like Nick Robertson who were on the ground giving reports saying like i'm sitting here that is 100 percent true yeah. right i mean there were there had, what's her name the, the other correspondent there they i mean look they're in harm's way i think the foreign correspondents right now for cable news particularly fox and cnn are the only ones that are telling you with their own eyes like they're looking at it and showing you that this is all true and what what's so amazing is we live in such a fucked up culture that even online, you get from people being like, well, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe maybe the terrorists are, are, are not so bad. And a, and a shout out to Trey Yingst at uh, Fox, 
yeah. who I think has done a phenomenal, totally good, phenomenal totally good. job. Yeah. Which I, I mean, and a crazy job. Like uh, I, I saw a video. Like he all, has to always wear the like bombproof jacket and yeah. helmet, and like he's reporting and then hits the dirt because like you hear the rockets. Like, yeah, it's real stuff. Yeah. Like that. You know what they're doing there is what journalism used to be and what it should always be, mm-hmm. and it's fact finding with real eyes. Mm-hmm. Anyway, we're gonna have a, a a terrific show. We're gonna cover an Israel update. Obviously, we're gonna also include. A uh, portion of what we just discussed here is the left's worst takes yes. yeah. on this whole thing. Uh, we're going to give you our winners of the week. We're going to return on that because I think it's really important. We've got a speaker's race that uh, well, we'll have an update. We'll see if we come to some kind of a conclusion. Uh, and then we got King of the Hill yeah. here, fellas. This is a jam-packed episode. Yeah, we the got some really good stuff. you got to remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel because uh, – I think we do a nice job in the audio medium, but you always get a little visual aid. Well, particularly King of the Hill. Yeah. Uh, I enjoy it more as a competitor when it's there on screen. Well, because you're a showman. Yeah. Well, you can add a little panache to the entire demonstration. You're a panache guy. I am. <laughs> I am. <laughs> and and also for, again, the opportunity to see like Elizabeth Warren hiding and like trying yeah. to run when Marky has a terrible take. But uh, you only see that on YouTube. I'll also say, uh, by the way, a, a pair of the senator shorts came in today. Oh, um, yeah. A, a, a uh, male nice. and female version of that. I mean, you've seen us. We did our live show. I did it in the Senator sweatshirt. Mm-hmm. The, the Fetterman shorts <laughs> were arrived here today. Uh, it's not appropriate for me to wear on the program, <laughs> but you should buy some. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a good Halloween outfit. It, it's and those, inappropriate for the air, but maybe in the Senate it just works. <laughs> it, it's a good Halloween outfit. Those, uh, those white ruthless hats with the red oh, yeah. ruthless script. Did we get some more of those? Well, they're also just, they're flying off the shelves. One of my cousins, um, you know, I, I was in Michigan for his yeah. his wedding uh, back in August, uh, sent me a picture. He he just got his in the mail. The thing looks great. Just a glistening, beautiful thing. So beautiful, good. beautiful hat. Yeah, I love that. Well, I mean, listen, they, I, I do think we do still have some available, which mm-hmm. is amazing. Second run of those. But the thing we start our Thursdays with, which we're going to start it again because we're having fun here, is the five stars. And we always do that by starting with the voice. Okay, fellas, this first one comes from Ava ATX, and it's titled How It All Started. Ava ATX writes, the first show I listened to was, quote, journos eat their own. I remember that one. (laughs) I was laughing so hard I had tears while driving. I had no idea this type of political podcast even existed. I went back and listened to a few earlier episodes, and I was hooked for life. I found MK through y'all. Oh, wow. Oh, awesome. And while I listen to some of her shows, it's not a must-listen like the Ruthless Podcast. Mm. I have some of the episodes in a playlist like Milestone Spectaculars, (laughs) Thanksgiving, and my fave, Journos. I'm not sure if it messes up the old man's analytics when I listen to them, Years and months later, but I sure hope it does. Oh, <laughs> so good. The old man is just Bam. really pouring over the data. Oh, I'm, I'm Ava, nervous ticking. Ava, <laughs> a- Ava ATX is one over my heart. Uh, it's my slight contribution to getting him riled up in the name of love. I love that. She and that's what we friendship. do here. That's our mission close. statement. That is. Rile up the old man. <laughs> keep, keep up the great work. Love the new video. And Wolf. Y'all deserve the success. Uh, thank you so nice. much. That's nice. That's yeah, nice. Thank you, Wolf. Yeah. Very kind. Very kind. All right. Uh, so, Duncan, what do you got? I got Zach from Texas. Uh, title is Dogs on Planes. Zach writes, fellas, longtime listener with a question for you all, but smug in particular. Oh, gosh. Here we go. <laughs> you are about to board a cross-country <laughs> flight. Mm-hmm. Two families are in front of you, both traveling quite heavily. One family is over encumbered with children, kids travel gear, and the other has two large surface Ooh. dogs in tow. Ooh. Who would you rather sit with slash near? The kids or the pooches? Gotta be dogs for me, but curious where the fellas land. Yeah, great let's question. Get, let's get this on this good. mug. Come on. This is like the SAT question where yeah. it's like two trains depart. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. So so here's the thing is this is from personal experience. I've had more experience flying where you have the irresponsible iPad parents who've, who've tossed the iPad and the kid's going ham. 
than the like you know animal going wild in general i've been fortunate in the sense that like we we will tell the people the truth we've, we've told them about all the airline incidents where an animal is going crazy and ruining things for everybody but in my experience is i've seen far fewer examples of that than you know parents being like i have no responsibility oh, i can't my kids. wait I just here's can't. your ipad child begins screaming dear lord please deliver <laughs> children to comfortably smug <laughs> Please deliver them sooner rather than later. Please allow us within the comforts of this precious studio to examine his travel capacity. And, and when he they're does. here, I don't want to hear any takes of like smokes too hard on his kids demanding they get like 1600s in third grade. <laughs> I smug, mean, we smug. already know the spelling cut. <laughs> yeah. They're smug competing may, as soon as they can walk. Smug, may, 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 may your smug. first child may your first child be a masculine child there you go. with a strong throwing arm. <laughs> so when you're on that plane, he can... Toss everything that's in his hands four rows ahead of you. <laughs> He's going to be able to spell everything in the manual. Be better. I know that. Yeah. Be better. Uh, I'm gonna. Uh, can I? Can I offer my own? Yeah, hundred percent. What's your analysis? So uh, my analysis is there's one key word here: large service dogs. Uh, the larger the dog, in my experience, the less likely to get the yip. Good point. And if you are in a disaster zone for a service pet. It is when you get the yips. Mm -hmm. It's the yips, the the constant yip throughout the flight that I I cannot I cannot abide. Uh, but the larger the dog, it seems like the more they just kind of lay there. It seems more uncomfortable for the person who has to have them under their seat. So I'm gonna in this case, I think I reluctantly have to side uh, with Smug. Yeah, if you have like a true service dog, like a German Shepherd, those are such well behaved. Yeah, they're animals. just laying there. They're great. great just laying. Great. Dogs. Okay. But if they're shitting all over the place, I mean, that's a is, different deal. Is is that your that's your take too? That's Smug, our take. That's yeah. the the dogs consensus. Well, I was correct <laughs> because of the large because of the large situation. I'm going to stand large. up for for mankind here. Well, there's on, no you don't have any choice. Unlike my co-host, the flying jalopy machine that you travel with <laughs> requires you to stand up for families everywhere. I'm going to offend some people as well. Oh, okay. I find most people that travel with animals to be the most inconsiderate people <laughs> at the airport. <laughs> I'm not, sure that I'm true. I am sure there's exceptions to that rule. And I'm sure there's some people that travel with service dogs who are seriously in need, you know, yeah. like service members who have PTSD or people who are blind and stuff like that. Yeah. But run of the mill people who travel with their animals are the most inconsiderate people on the airplane. Huh? Yeah. Huh? So I mean, your interaction with other passengers on an airplane is rather limited. I feel like this whole thing is basically a red herring. You got noise canceling headphones. Like I don't know, open your computer or your phone. Put See, on I, a I, fucking movie. I don't. Like I don't understand why uh, the other travelers impact so much of your travel. What does impact your travel is when you have a really inconsiderate adult, not a child, who's acting crazy on an airplane. And I think those people over-index for bringing large dogs. On an airplane, large dogs. That okay, is well, me, it falls flat with me. But Smash, what do you got? I think this is the one scenario where I'd actually accept the voucher from the airline, <laughs> <laughs> head back to the lounge, and wait for the next flight. <laughs> take the oh. take the four fifty. He's pour, he's pulling the emergency chute and sliding he's down get, it. He's going DB Cooper <laughs> out of the back of that sucker. No, no way. I sit between those two things. Okay, uh. well that's fair enough. Smug, what do we got for our next five star? So this is from Hoosier Hank, and the title is You Broke My Heart, But I Still Love You. It reads, Making a six-hour sojourn to o uh, Oh, wow. Making a six-hour sojourn to Iowa one way to see the fellas on my birthday. Thank you so much for that. Awesome. I very much enjoyed the show in Iowa, meeting the fellas, but the next episode there is no shout-out to Hoosier Hank. There were shout-outs for others, but not the guy on the 64th birthday who drove... So uh, let's correct let just, this let me, immediately. Let me, let me stop you right there. I remember Hank. I do. He was a hell of a guy. Yeah. I talked to him at the bar for probably 15 minutes, and he drove down there from South Bend. So this is a guy who loves the show, tells his friends about the show, and he is one of the greatest minions that we have. Yeah, I tell, got, I got to chat me, with him too at the bar. Well, uh, d tell me, like, look, I appreciate you representing his cause here, uh, but didn't you find that perhaps another Hoosier should have maybe ca carried that luggage? I, I actually, wow. I'm, I'm I not mean, surprised. I mean, you're just overlooking <clears throat> Hoosier, Hank. I just got to admit something for all of our listeners and all of these guys who probably know this. This is pretty good. I would make 
I would make perhaps the worst politician in America. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I love you all dearly. And when I get the honor of meeting you at these live events, always love those interactions and talking to everybody. I forget everything. I get overwhelmed. Yeah. And by the time I get back to the hotel, like my brain turns off and I black out and don't remember like most of the interactions I had. That's a fair enough. Point. I, I I don't know. Maybe it's like anxiety about the entire thing and the fact you're doing a live show, but it goes in one ear and out the other. It's not because I don't love you. It's just I would be a terrible politician. He's got <laughs> this, is, this is an honest man. Yeah. This is an honest I, I think man. it's due to exhaustion after we meet folks at the bar that we black out and can't remember anything. I don't think you have the it's same 100% due to exhaustion. <laughs> but, the but same. Tremendous shout out. I remember meeting Hank. We had a great yeah. time, and thank you so much for coming to that show. Yeah. It was yeah. a blast. The guy's a legend. He was a, gr a great guy. Oh, all the people that did all of those things. That's great. We got some more live stuff to announce here shortly, but not today. Uh, anyway, let's get into the serious stuff for one moment. Uh, it was announced yesterday by the State Department that the number of Americans killed by Hamas is up to 22. That has risen from 14 the day before. God willing, it doesn't go any higher. We don't know what the situation is yet with hostages. We don't know the total number, let alone the number of Americans. It's still an extremely serious situation over there, uh, as evidenced by how seriously the international community is taking this. Right, mm -hmm. You saw really strong statements, unusually strong, out of Biden, where, who I will say, look, I was willing to say a day late and a dollar short. I think it was a day late. I'm not sure it was a dollar short. I think he said what he needed to say. I don't by any means think that this guy is up for the job and that he has the kind of commitment or the reverence within the world community to do what needs to be done here. But I thought in terms of a first step, if you're going to take 72 hours to actually say something, say the right things after that. Yeah, I, I was sort of surprised by how unequivocal he was. But where I would disagree with you is I, I don't think he was a dollar short. I think he was six billion dollars. short. Bingo. And you had a handful of senators, even Democrats, coming out right after his statement saying that this guy needs to pull back this six billion dollars. And Jake Sullivan, right after Biden's press conference, didn't really say he didn't commit to anything. That's a great point. But but the but the problem is that. I just think that so many Democrats are so used to taking the party line from the mm -hmm. left wing and just being soft on Palestine, the, 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 the Hamas, being soft on terror, that they are just willing to give, give, give. And it's going to take a while to sort of like break down their hardened shell against people like Israel. Yeah, I, th I mean, th that's such a great point is because I think one thing you saw from so many Democrats is this like cowardice and unwillingness to call out terrorism as terrorism where you had the squad for example unwilling to put out like statements for like 72 hours oh yeah they had to think about it right yeah. and, and all the, the statements when they finally did come out were the most like horrific examples of putting out a statement were like we stand for decolonization like okay no, it's, it's murderous. But yeah, here's, okay. the, here's the thing, it's Smug. Horrific. They didn't all put out statements. I don't know if we have this video in the system, but did you guys catch? Did you guys catch Talib? Yes, that's when right. she exactly. was being oh, asked. Walking? When she was being asked oh. point blank, "What do you think about these babies being beheaded? What do you think about these women being?" Wouldn't raped? answer it. She didn't say a single thing. It's so. It, it, imagine just for one moment being elected representative of the United States when 22 Americans were killed and hundreds of our allies killed, and they're talking about beheading babies, and you have to, like, think about it. Right. Let alone not say anything. And, like, I, you know, I said that the, when she put, when this happened, I said imagine having to sort of equivocate or think about it. And, and the point was made by the, some of the minions online, which I think is a very valid one, is that she's not equivocating. She has a point of view. Exactly. It is not it is not for the, the innocent people who were attacked, raped, killed, murdered, babies, all that stuff. It's on the side of the Palestinians, and that's why she's, she can't say anything. That's why. And, and that's, that's, the, that's the thing is, like, okay, yes, Biden came out and said, we, we stand with Israel. But, like, that's what he said. What did he actually do? He freed up all this money, right, $6 billion dollars. And, and here's the other thing that I think is very key is, you know, the State Department, Jake Sullivan, 
those lizard people, these Ivy League monsters who who cannot put the blame on Iran, who is behind all this, funded all of this, trained all this, responsible for all these rockets. They can't put the blame on Iran because that would be an admission of guilt. It, it, because you're right. That's that's they can't do that. They're like, I uh uh we we still don't have any proof of Iranian involvement, even though the Wall Street Journal was the first out with the story. And the Washington Post confirmed. And then the Washington Post confirms it, and they still are trying to be like, uh, well, we don't know because they would have to admit their approach to foreign policy after President Trump has been a complete and utter failure. 22 Americans, what? at least, that we know of right now, uh, like Holmes said, I pray there's no more, have been killed. There is an unknown number, estimated between 14 and 20, some as of the last count have been taken as hostages by terrorists. And this administration and their policies emboldening these terrorists are responsible. Smug, you mentioned Jake Sullivan, who's, of course, one of Biden's top national security aides. You mentioned that he's an Ivy Leaguer. And I think what we have learned in these last few days is that an Ivy League degree doesn't necessarily signify what it used to. At one point in this country, it it signifies to me the opposite. opposite. To me, the exact opposite. There was a point in this country when you knew that an Ivy League degree was a guarantee of intelligence, Mm -hmm. a guarantee that you could hire this person and that this person would not only be reliable and smart, but they would be somewhat trustworthy. I don't know if you guys have seen what some of these professors and some of these students have been putting yeah. out in these Ivy League schools. But oh yeah, is, we're going to get into that. Most we're we're going to get into rhetoric. that in a second because that that is a as well worth covering. Mm-hmm. Two other pieces of news on the Israel front: uh, Israel is only the first target. Warns Hamas commander Mahmoud Al Zahar. This is from Clip One's Wolf. <laughs> سوف تعيش حالة لا ظلم فيها ولا قهر فيها ولا خيانة ولا صيانة ولا مسيحية غادرة ولا قتل بهذا بهذه الحجم هذه الجرائم التي ترتكب بحق الشعب الفلسطيني والشعب العربي في كل الدول العربية سواء كانت في لبنان وسوريا وفي العراق وفي غ... So, uh, listen, you're not going to understand that. For, yeah, for the folks not on YouTube, he's essentially calling for violence everywhere treacherous christianity uh, zionism yeah against against all those elements in the world which is what they're what they're talking about i mean i think you raised the point last episode uh ashbrook that colonists uh is sort of a euphemism yes for this crew where they use it against israelis uh where some on the left here in america view that specifically to the state of israel uh but it's not it's for basically anybody that doesn't believe in Islam anywhere in the world, and most specifically, America. Mm-hmm. And what they're calling for is violence in America mm-hmm. and terrorism. Mm-hmm. Look, we, we've done this, and I know a lot of our listeners are going to be too young to remember what 9-11 was like, but there was a lot of warning up before 9-11, and that's not to say that there was any way to prevent what happened there that day. I mean, look— Terrorism is, by definition, an act that is sort of unforeseen, which, of course, 9-11 was. But you, we ignored a lot of signals along the way. We talked about this last episode with Cobar Towers, military barracks, uh, you know. Bombing USS of the Trade Coal. Center. Trade Center, USS Coal, Mumbai, Hotel Mumbai, <laughs> all of those things that were like, oh, well, I guess that's just, you know, sort of an overseas thing. But really what they meant was us. Mm-hmm. That's what they meant. That's what they meant. And that's what they're saying explicitly yes. Yes. here. Well, it's interesting because it's almost like they've spoken with a high dollar message guru because there is one word that he didn't use. I, at least I didn't hear him use it and I haven't heard a lot of them use it. But in our world, actions speak much louder than words. And we all know what that one word is. It's jihad. And this is exactly what these people are doing to Israel. It's what they're threatening to do to America on Friday. The rest of the world on Friday, we've seen these posts on Twitter and elsewhere basically calling for a day of terror, a day of killing people that they call colonists. Mm Mm-hmm. I, I'm I'm sorry. I, I grew up in Sharonville and Hamilton, Ohio. Yeah. I, I I played high school sports. I'm not a fucking colonist. I'm just a regular American. And they want to kill me 
because I look different than them. Yeah. Because I who, think who was differently by, like, than them. Huguenots, they were like killing beavers or something there. Those are colonists. <laughs> they they hate us. Yeah. And that is that is more apparent than ever. More apparent than ever. It's not just Jews. It's everybody. And this is why it's so important for Americans to listen clearly, to pay attention to the border. If you've never thought that the border, if you thought the border is something they talk about on Fox News yeah. that doesn't affect you because you don't live in South Texas or you're not living in New York where they're putting up, like the border affects you. Mm -hmm. Terrorists coming over the border affect Well, if you had you. any question about that, check out the rallies across this country. Exactly. And, 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 and the, rhetor the rhetoric from these radical Islamists does affect us. We saw that on 9-11. You know, I used to live a stone's throw from that mosque in, Dearborn? False, in false Church. Oh, in False Church. Where yeah. Anwar al-Awlaki was an imam and was preaching his violent yeah. rhetoric. Yeah. And, you know, some of the bombers or i'm sorry some of the hijackers on 9-11 were there you know i mean like this stuff is it's still around it's still around and you can even hear it it's come out you know it, there's been tape of this happening around the country over the last 72 hours Dude, they, and it's it's shocking stuff th blocks from the white house <clears throat> on wednesday night there was a rally at George Washington University. It cost sixty thousand dollars a year in tuition to go there. They were they were chanting Intifada, Intifada, not two state solution, right. two state solution. Yeah. They want to kill Jews. They want to kill Americans. This is terrorism, yeah. and I hope to God that the FBI is taking it seriously. Yeah. Uh, and, well, I don't think they are. No, because, they got track yeah. parents showing up at PTA meetings. There, there's PTA meetings across this country. It's there the are same folks bullshit about, like before 9-11 where the FBI and the CIA weren't communicating and fucking Muhammad Atta's taking flight lessons in Florida and they know he is in the country and nobody does anything about it. And that's what scares me about our intelligence community. Bingo. I, I pray that we've figured out those problems, but like what's happened over the last five years has not inspired a lot of confidence. That's the, is the week before these attacks, Newsweek has that story about the FBI is putting all these resources into uh, trying to investigate Republicans because they're like, well, MAGA is, is, could be a terror group coming up ahead of this election. If that is where our national security resources are focused as opposed to, I don't know, the leader of Hamas calling for a day of terror across the world, that's a significant problem. And I think it's extremely convenient for an administration who has shown that they try, whether it's Merrick Garland telling people, look, don't look into this Biden stuff. You know, we have seen so many examples of them politicizing issues yeah. when their job is protecting Americans. We've spent so much time demonizing police in this society. Yeah. We've spent so much time demonizing the military in this society, and we're going to wake up one day and wish we hadn't. Yeah. We have spent so much time arguing about, oh, we got to defund the police. We need to refund the police. We need to actually spend more on them because they're the only thing that's standing between us and the door-to-door -door terror that we saw in Israel. Let me ask you this. Please. Let me ask you this. If there was a rally at George Washington University where there was a group of students that were sitting around calling for death to any ethnic minority in this United States other than Jewish people or Protestant white people, do you think the FBI would not have made arrests at that? Like, I, do, I mean, is, I, there I, any, is there any chance I would say that those people would not be— shortlisted on a terrorist watch list and, and yet it's instance, happening around this country i would say i'd say this is a, a great uh point that's been brought up a lot uh lately in this discussion of the anti-semitism that has been completely accepted by the left the radical left who now is the left that is they're, 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 they're in driving the now. train the, you know that you've got the squad and everyone there was this example brought up of uh there was this student in who wasn't allowed into any of these ivy league institutions where uh, they got a 3.9 unweighted GPA. You saw this. I saw this. They had a 1590 SAT score. They had a startup that got funded their <laughs> junior year in high school. Yeah. And they got turned down by all the Ivy League schools. Six, 16 schools turned him down. Because he was Asian. Oh, man. You because be they're not one of the groups that you know BLM and the mainstream left considers you know one of these groups that is part of the like decolonize you know, you gotta equity be on, movement. You got to be on the right like level on the pyramid of oppression. Exactly. Ah, oh, as, def as and, defined and by them. The problem yeah. is that because that by same the way, group. there were Chinese slaves in this country 
who built the railroads for no pay. And and Nobody I think that's the whole that. thing is like they they've built this block of people that for so long they have captured in, in the sense of they've captured corporate America with like, listen, yes, there are riots across this country the summer of 2020. We are burning buildings down, but we are still demanding, you know, like Bank of America wire us $10 million for, for our cause. Can we talk about this for a minute? I would love to. 100%. Let's go. So there was, and you saw this in polling right after the death of George Floyd, there was the phrase Black Lives Matter mm. pulled through the roof because, of course, your average American believes that. Of course. Of course they believe that. Of course they believe it. Um, and so there was this sort of running with that without exactly examining this organization whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And then in the months and years that followed, those of us who were involved in politics watched as it became quite evident that Black Lives Matter, the organization, was not a social justice outfit at all. It was a radical Marxist leftist outfit that was pushing an agenda that quite honestly is very, very close to domestic terror. Yeah, abolish 100%. the police, uh, prison abolition. Um, you know, they support terrorism, as we've seen. Well, and they said and they said outright that they support the, the annihilation of Israel. Yeah. And it, I mean, it reminds you a lot of like what you would hear from like Louis Farrakhan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Or some of the sort of historical uh, black power outfits that didn't essentially push a Martin Luther King vision of equality this, in America. This has existed for a long time. You know, go back to Jeremiah Wright. Yeah. Um, you know, Obama's preacher in Chicago. Yes. Yep. Yeah. You know, goddamn America. Yeah. The, the famous speech. I mean, this has existed in this country for a very long time. It's only this week that our eyes were open to how so that's Black Lives Matter and comes also, out. Real quick, another example is like that photo that President Obama at the time took with Louis Farrakhan shaking hands. Yeah. Somehow that, that like didn't journalists hurt. were like, hey, for, uh, they only revealed that photo after the Obama presidency. Yeah. Of being like, well, we didn't want to hurt him when he was running. Like, like how is this, shocking is that? It, it's just it's completely shocking. If you're not unfamiliar with Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam uh, and and the things that they have to say about Israel and Jewish people in general, and uh, anti like, a, just like the most anti, do a Google to search. It, it, it'll do, you'll go down a rabbit hole and you'll be there for a long time and you'll be outraged by what you see. But my point is, is that this week you saw both local chapters and national chapter of BLM, mm -hmm. Black Lives Matter, supposed uh, social justice organization, uh, send out. You know, Chicago sent out a, a, an image of the actual fucking parachute things oh yeah i saw i couldn't believe that, that and they were standing steadfast with the palestinians knowing that those parachute things were what happened around this festival they were loaded with machine guns that indiscriminately shot a whole bunch of very innocent people including now it seems 22 american people and took a bunch of people hostage and forced people into a a, a enclosure where uh, th there was more kidnappings and everything else and they, they supported that. In, it's it, not only in concept, but in practice, as we knew mm -hmm. it, how it got executed. It was an after the fact deal. It wasn't it wasn't it's like, like I didn't know this is what they would do. It's like this is good. They did. This it. is what right. they did. And we appreciate that they've done it they, since like the Chicago chapter since came out and said, well, uh, we said uh, some things we regret and then reiterated the whole point yeah. of what they were saying. Mm -hmm. So this is what they believe. Yeah. This is what they believe. And and you see uh, Yale professors and uh, higher education all over this country, some of which we'll get into in the next segment, that are talking about standing with the Palestinians knowing that they beheaded babies in these kibbutzes. They know that they raped women, kidnapped them. They, they did it on purpose, and they did it because— they thought that this was the right thing to do to innocent people. And they're like, yes, that's what we want to do. So are we not at a point? We are sitting currently of just a handful of blocks away from Black Lives Matter Boulevard. What is it? Plaza. Road? Plaza. Plaza. Whatever it is. The mayor of this town in D.C. decided after George Floyd and after the riots and everything else to rip up 16th Street and create 
a sort of memorial to what she said was like social justice and put Black Lives Matter in a zillion point font visible from space uh, all down this road. And it's it, so I, I also wanted to bring this up about that. So there's this great account on Twitter, Western Lensman, who's been putting up video holding a lot of these activists accountable with their own words. And he found a video in 2015 of BLM co-founder uh, Patrice Kalours. This is a direct quote. Palestine is our generation South Africa. If we don't step up boldly and courageously to end the imperialist project called Israel, we're doomed. After calling for the genocide yeah. of an entire country, they receive millions of dollars in corporate funding. They get every celebrity, you know, every every you know Ivy League school to post their support for this movement. Yeah, I, I want to see an apology note from every Fortune 50 company in, in totally. this country. Yes. That says we made a huge mistake. That's I want to see that. That's part of this. I want to see that. Because this environment that was created by them allowing this kind of like, oh, we are like decolonizing and, and, and this kind of, like you said, neo-Marxist movement, which is essentially a belief in destroying the civilization in a nutshell. All those people who allowed it created an environment to allow that this horrific atrocities are committed. And then all these left-wing organizations are like, actually, that's good. The student group of every Ivy League uh, university is like, this is good. We like this. I really hope that does happen. I'm not going to hold that. I think we got to push for breath. it. I, I think the listeners here need to push for it because here's the thing. We know for a, for a fact that this was all a protection racket to begin with. Yep. Yeah. And we know that corporate America was basically paying off an organization that they thought would leave them alone. So cynical. But in, in retrospect, they were funding what is tantamount in some ways to d domestic terror. I mean, they really were. I don't want to sugarcoat that. Yep. Because if that's the view that they are professing amongst their followers, that the people of Israel need to die mm -hmm. because they are the Jewish faith. Yeah. If they are, if that is what they're saying and they are organizing rallies to burn down American cities as they did. Th yeah. That's what that is, guys. That's what that is. And, and all of the police uh, abolition uh, that these organizations have pushed for in places like Washington, D.C., have in very quantifiable ways made the lives of black and brown people in these cities worse. Yep. Demonstrably worse. I mean, D.C. crime is through the roof. Horrific. And, and those communities are speaking out and want more police. I want a similar check to the one that you wrote to those organizations to go to local police forces. Yeah. yeah. I want a similar check to go to uh, Jewish anti-defamation organizations across this country who have to actually fight real anti-Semitism on a day-to-day -day basis, yeah. particularly now that you have a fucking fatwa that's out and you have people that you funded that are, that are fanning the flames. Right, because the terrorism fundamentally, if you think about that concert for peace, ostensibly for peace in Israel, where the terrorist came in on their hang gliders that BLM is celebrating, they are killing Jewish people simply because they think Jewish people aren't as good as them. Mm -hmm. They're killing Jewish That's children the because worst they think Jewish brand people are lower racism. than them. That is racism. The it's worst terrorism brand. based on racism. And I thought that's what they were supposed to be against. And can I show one thing you mentioned? When uh, a, a great example of what you a lot of folks have been seeing over the past week since these horrors have unfolded. You know, you mentioned like you know anti defamation, but like the anti ADL. You know, you had uh, Mr. Greenblatt who runs that organization on what was it CNN or MSNBC where he was like I am horrified mm -hmm. that your news organization is allowing these anti-semitic voices I think a very important discussion you're seeing it across so many left-leaning individuals whether they were at Ivy League institutions mm -hmm. um, wherever where they're like I'm horrified at seeing these like progressive institutions advocating for the eradication of Israel right. it's like Dude, how did you not realize? Yeah, they are who we thought they were. They are, yeah, exactly. Like, this is, hopefully is the rude awakening that you needed to get back on track and realize that, like, when you enabled these organizations who expressly believe that, like, I mean, since the summer of 2020, right. when you wrote off that, like, burning down American cities is acceptable, right. you, you crossed the Rubicon at that right. point. Right. You cannot act completely shocked, like, oh, shit, like, 
How is violence visited upon folks I care about we, now? We say this over and over again, but listen to their chants. It's not two-state solution, two-state solution, give us peace. It's from the river to the sea. Yep. And that means they want to genocide yes. let's, Jewish people. Let's, let's play some of those clips here. Um, this is uh, GW students uh, gathering in D.C. Uh, for a planned, quote, vigil for the martyrs of Palins, Pal Palestine. Let's go to clip four. They're laying down flowers. For for Palestinians, not Israelis. Yeah. This is this is for and, and, and not even for even this Palestinians. Is, this, this is, is for advocacy the for the terrorists. Like rest in glory to the terrorists. Who rest in glory, killed. which which if you know what that means, that means martyrs. That means people who killed people and were themselves killed in like Ashbrook said, jihad. A perverse, the, the, perverse interpretation of Islam. The word that they're trying to like escape for PR reasons because they know well we can't still get corporate funding because they know the word jihad means what we want. So mm. uh we'll call it decolonization because we've already tricked them after we burned down cities into funding us. This is jihad. Yeah, that's let's what, go that's to the let's go to the next one. It's clip five. This is terrible. Yes, this is Dearborn, Michigan. This is a Hamas pep rally. So for those of you in the audio medium, what it is is literally hundreds of people gathered in a theater in Dearborn, Michigan, waving Palestinian flags again after, after, it became evident of what they did to the Israeli people after, not before, not as a matter of sort of a, a principle that they think that there should be some kind of a two state solution mm. or they feel mm. oppressed by the Israeli people. None of that. All of that's nonsense. But that is would be something that's like a freedom of speech issue. And, you know, an event as big as that takes time to organize. It's not like they said. Uh, at four o'clock, we're doing this. And then at eight o'clock, everybody shows up. They they started organizing events like this and events like we saw at college campuses around the country the day that the terrorists rolled into these kibbutzes and killed all of these innocent people while they were laying in their beds. I mean, it's just it, 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 it's very hard, like to process at some level. But but like, look. To the point that we're making that led into those playing those clips. If we're going to restart the dial and I think we sh obviously we should. I don't believe I am cynical about this as I know you guys are, too. But if you're going to what you need to do is eliminate Black Lives Matter, the phrase from anything that is socially acceptable in this country. It should be tantamount to the Ku Klux Klan. It really should, because what they're doing is a overtly racist but they're not even they're calling for a genocide like these people are fucking evil mm -hmm. and the idea that we are sitting blocks away from a road that is black lives matter plaza name for an organization of a person who called for genocide let, let, let me just let me just submit for the moment that it's important that we have a road here in Washington, D.C. that is about social justice. Never mind like Martin Luther King and Martin Luther King Boulevard and Martin Luther King Memorial and all of that and the, and the African American Museum and all of that. Like, let's just submit that that road is that's what that needs to be. How about Frederick Douglass? Right. Great idea. How about Rosa Parks? Great idea. You know, it, it, as much as it pains me to suggest like I would be fine with putting Barack Obama's name on that as the first black president. Get Black Lives Matter off of this fucking street. Right. Because that is not what that signifies. It doesn't signify Black Lives Matter. It doesn't. It doesn't even signify anything to do with black lives. It's black lives if you believe in what we believe in. Mm -hmm. If you don't, if you're a black Israeli, that doesn't apply to you. Mm -hmm. Those black lives don't matter. That doesn't matter. And that is the root of racism that we cannot have in this country this sort of speech police that begin telling us what 
we can say and can't say, except it doesn't matter anything yeah. to do with the intent of what it signifies. Yeah. And you know, I, I, what I also want to add in, in terms of like recent events and how you still see this horrific and insidious ideology affecting the lives of Americans here is, uh, I don't know if you folks saw in California, Gavin Newsom signed into law the Ebony Alert, where yes, there's Amber Alerts for when a children is kidnapped, but now also there will be a separate Ebony Alert if it's a black child. I just, like, do I just don't understand it, guys. I just don't. I just don't understand it. I, I, I literally don't understand. For for one, somebody had to have been lobbying that for him to do it. Yeah, right. And it's 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 the idea that somehow an Amber Alert isn't enough. No. Like for those of us who followed that debate and how the Amber Alert alert became a thing, it's horrific. It's because kidnapping is the most horrific thing you can imagine as a parent in America. And any time a parent in America or anybody in America gets an Amber Alert on their phone, they're they're absolutely on the lookout. They look it. out. They're on the lookout. The idea that you need to separately qualify a race of people under an alert because it means something different, fucking flabbergast. I mean, here's the thing. is like, imagine you are a parent who, this is like the worst day of your life. Your child is missing. And you contact the police and the authorities, and they're like, okay, we can only give you one alert. We can't give you, like, the two special alerts because your child was Asian or your child was white or your child was Latino because, you know, Gavin Newsom said only Ebony alerts. You know, we can only do that. But, like, hopefully just one works for your kid. You know, like, how fucked up is this? It's just it's this crazy. Is like that's America's what racism to, is. Yeah, that's exactly this is, it. This is the thing. The, like, the, the more divided our society becomes, the more susceptible we are to people who come over here from the Middle East and say things like the colonizers are bad or yeah. say things like, you know, I, like we cannot be divided as an American society. You know, a lot of people who listen to this show, you guys have pointed out earlier, may not remember what things were like after 9-11. But after 9-11, one of the worst tragedies in the history of our country, people came together, regardless of their background, regardless of their creed, and they stood up for what America meant. And I just think there are so many forces trying to break that down mm -hmm. and divide us by what, 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 what differences there are. When all of us grew up trying to figure out what makes us similar. You yeah. know, and we, it didn't all, have to figure it out because it was innate and taught. Right. And we didn't have to think about it. We we used to be taught that like don't judge a person by the color of their skin, but the you know the content, content of their content character. Of their character. Right. Yeah. And now that's like no, actually it's by the content yeah. of the color. It's the color. That's it. And and oh god, it's just it's so infuriating. But listen, that's the that's the update on that. I wish we had some like I, the only sort of like point that you can sort of take from this domestically in politics that isn't anything but completely depressing is the fact that they have said as denny green and paraphrasing yes they are who we thought they were bingo mm -hmm. and, and and to hold those corporate entities who sponsored these groups after 2020 summer of riots and violence hold those corporate entities responsible hold them responsible. Cut all that funding off for blm and and, and ask them to change the road i don't know how many cities have BLM plazas, but get them down. Mm -hmm. Because if you want something that that signifies what the black community in this country has gone through, there are, I can think of 10 incredible alternatives, and there are probably thousands of credible alternatives that you can, that mean something to somebody beyond an organization that supports domestic and international terrorism. Can, can we get a Clarence Thomas? Plaza for the Wouldn't greatest that be nice? Supreme Court justice we've ever had. I mean, he overcame more than probably. I will say he overcame more than any Supreme Court justice that we've had. The, the funny thing is, I didn't even mention it because I, I never imagined that that they will never. The ideology is too far of a bridge to divide. I just at this point, I just don't want domestic terrorism. Yeah, is that is that that's, too much to ask? Pretty low that's, bar. That's right? where we are. <laughs> is that that's right? where we are? Like that's where we are. Please just, like, left no terrorism. It'd be great if like Hezbollah wasn't tattooed on the side of a building. Yeah, I love that. That would be <laughs> terrific. Anyway, all right. So we're gonna get back to the who won the week, and I know that that this is probably what we've been talking about for the last week is uh eminently important to who you think won the week we always start with smash at the end of the table who do you got 
Well, fellas, this week there's a lot of turmoil in the world, and a lot of people are very dissatisfied by what Joe Biden has offered as his solution. And I've seen an awful lot of people on Twitter, and I've heard from an awful lot of people in my hometown that they wish things were the way they were when Trump was president, when we didn't have this turmoil in the Middle East, when there was more strength projected from the Oval Office. So I think Trump won the week mm. just by virtue of the contrast, the contrast. between the weakness yeah. that we see out of Democrats and the strength that he projected when he was president of the United States. His numbers are obviously still just miles ahead of his opponents. And we've seen some polls coming out in the middle of the week to show that he's even strengthened his position in the key Midwestern yeah. states. So I'm, I'm going to say Trump won the week. I mean, honestly, like I, I've said before, if I were his campaign, I would just highlight Folks, remember what life was like under that presidency of where, you know, you've got the Abraham Accords, you've got Soleimani being turned into salsa. You have, America was strong. We didn't have to worry about these kind of horrific And you had a issues. big fuck around to find out factor totally. abroad where yeah. it, where people were like, look, I'd like to do this. I don't know what this guy's capable of, so yeah. we're not going to do it. Yeah. All right. Uh, Duncan, you got uh, this won't be popular, but I think actually Joe Biden. What? I think Joe Biden. Um, and the, I mean, the reason's really simple. It's, it's, it's not because what I think he did was perfect and waiting 72 hours and hosting a barbecue over the weekend is all this turmoil is going on in the world is a good thing. Um, but I think he did enough in the speech that he gave to, I don't know, uh, uh, kind of ga- regain the confidence of enough of the beltway a cell corridor chattering classes of the democratic party to push back the fears that he's gone that now. he's yeah yeah and i think for him and his campaign like that's what you got to do that's what you got to yeah. do that's good uh, that's answer some of the questions that 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 sort of like cable news left wing glitterati have that like maybe you can't get there um and i think he i think he he did that and i mean Anytime, whoever is president of the United States and, and you know, the American president co- has to confront something like this on the global stage, typically it helps their poll numbers. Yeah. It just does. So for that no, reason— I think that's probably—look, it's not going to be popular, as you're right, but I think you, you, you make a lot of good points, and it probably does reflect down the road. We'll see what polling looks like next week, but I'd be surprised if you weren't right about yeah. that. I will say uh, in a point that— uh, Ashbrook brought up earlier the one thing we were looking for out of this administration was the freezing of the six billion dollars. Did not get it. They have not talked about. It. They refused to link on the Iranian side. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was legislation that was introduced yesterday by McConnell and Cotton. Oh, that's right. A good flag. That is, and anytime you get a leader in the Senate that's introducing legislation, you got to watch for it because they rarely put their names on those things because they like to foster the committee system or whatever. But if you get that, it means it's real and it's a congressional deal. And if this guy thinks for one second that the House and Senate could pass a bill like that and veto it, he'll go right back to ground zero. Any any sort of like confidence that he built this week would be completely wiped out. That thing is important. Yeah, That's really important. All right, Smug, what do you got? So my winner of the week is Doug Burgum. We got news today that Doug Burgum has filed to be in the primary in the state of Nevada. So far, it's only him, Trump, and Vivek who've gotten there. The Burgum campaign also announced that they are bringing back their gift cards for for donors. The old gift card Gift cards, you know. This is a a ploy to get back on the debate stage, right? Well, it's not a ploy, but I think— I mean, look— Here's the thing is you have to— Call what you will, but it is. It's a tactic. You have to hear thresholds in terms of donors and polling, Mm -hmm. which I think— Listen, if you you can clear the polling as well as the donor threshold, I mean, that's that's the rules that's set. And if you play by the rules and you win by the rules, you belong on the stage. I can't disagree with that. I think he, he made a good argument for it. On the sh- on the show, he's like, "Look, I'm a businessman in you know information technology. Like, I've made my career hacking a system, and that's what I did here. And I I have to respect that. Uh, it's probably not the way I'd go about it, but I get it. I guess like what I'm what I'm going back to is that second debate. He you know he had more opportunities. He didn't. He, I don't think he ever got that spark or that fire that I think is fundamentally going to change." anything in in his poll numbers 
You well, know, I just I don't see it. I I agree with you, Michael. He because I, I love the guy and yeah. he's he makes a great case, but I don't know. He 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 may not have gotten the spark in the debate, but he was unequivocal when it came to yeah. this situation. His quote. Countries like Qatar and Turkey that support Hamas should have 24 hours to give up their agents, close offices, and cut support, or we should close airspace to Qatar Airways and Turkish Airlines if they refuse. See, that's strong. Look at that. That is leadership. Very strong. He knows. He knows. And we were talking about this earlier. He knows what that means. Yep. Yeah. He knows exactly what the consequences are if you say Turkish Air- Airways cannot fly. Because you can put the screws on countries without boots on the ground. It's the kind of specificity you'd like to see in a president. And I think I, I think can't, Doug Burgum I, is. Look, I can't disagree with that. I just Damn, uh, another Burgum win. <laughs> what can we say? <laughs> I, I don't disagree with that. I just don't know if the if the voters dig in on that sort of stuff and the policy chops and all of that and maybe say, not. You know, Doug's my guy, you know, it's just I've been disappointed in this for a very long time. Yeah, that, that voters don't seem to care about those things. Unfortunately, I guess. We'll I, look, I all fair, very fair points. I didn't know that statement. That's a very, very strong one. I like anybody with a plan, which is why my winner of the week was very difficult for me this week, because I had two candidates in Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis. I ultimately went with Nikki Haley for the reasons I'll describe, but the reason I thought DeSantis had such a strong week was because he ultimately didn't, he did not just said the right thing that a president should say in response to what happened in Israel. He also had a plan. Like he also rolled out, this is what the state of Florida is going to do with Iranian funded businesses and started pushing legislation there to make sure that he's doing what he would do as president, demonstrating Mm -hmm. that with the power he has, this is what he's going to do. And I love that shit. I I love love that shit. I love it too. In fact, I mean, he's done that. He did that on the debate stage. And it seems like on a lot of these issues, whether it's culture war, the economy, or all these things, he has a roadmap. He's put his money where his mouth is. In Florida. And he's delivered results. But the reason I went with Nikki Haley is because I think that her strongest footing in this primary obviously is the world stage. Mm -hmm. Not just because she was a UN ambassador and because of the good things that she got done there. She seems most comfortable there. Yeah. She's unequivocal. She has very clear views of, and she's based, you know, she, I think her, her quote was something like Israel should finish them off mm-hmm. when it comes to mm-hmm. Hamas. Mm-hmm. Well, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. This is not a time for restraint. When you have people who can exhibit humanity that shouldn't be on this earth, you should eliminate that from this earth because whatever price that that should be paid for what they did needs to be commensurate and it needs to be so heavy that all of the fucked up perverted ideology that may provoke future attacks needs to have at least some moment of hesitation on it and that is the one point that i think there's an awful lot of uh quote unquote base constituency right now it just doesn't understand. Maybe it's a post 9-11, like they don't remember how we got to 9-11. And too many people equate our response to 9-11 with the 20-year protracted war, mm-hmm. not what the intent was immediately afterwards. Do mm-hmm. we agree that that was not the way to handle it over the long run? Absolutely. I think everybody agrees on that, Republican, Democrat, and everybody, independent. But you cannot just sort of isolate yourself. And the thing that that sort of blows my mind every four years that we're not in power, that a Democratic president is power, you get this weird libertarian strain within the Republican Party that is the loudest online, makes the most sort of like grassroots push. And they just sort of like push their way into the front of the stage that like somehow this is the new view of the Republican Party that like, well, we should take a note and, you know, if it doesn't really concern us, we should not be interested in it. And then people get to vote and it's like, no, we fucking hate that. Mm -hmm. Republicans actually do hate that. Mm -hmm. Republicans actually believe that there is a moral authority. And if you're not it, somebody else is. Well, I I, I empathize with folks on the right who look at the Palestinian people, a lot of these people living in abject poverty in Gaza and say, you know, I don't want them to be collateral damage to this war between Hamas and Israel. I totally understand that. I guess my point back to them would be nobody has terrorized the people 
of Gaza more than Hamas. Yep. Mm -hmm. That the international community, NGOs, aid organizations, Israel itself, Israel itself has put millions and millions of dollars into Gaza to do things like I don't know, make sure they have electricity, make sure they have running water, put pipes in there so they have a, a better sewage system. Hamas ripped those pipes out of the ground to build rockets. Yeah, they're, they're, they're so, water system. So there is no... So like when you hear about like, oh, wow, Gaza won't be able to get water. Yeah. Well, Hamas, who governs that area, pulled those pipes out and built rockets out of them and fired them at Israel. Right. So like at that point, you do have a, like a... There is a moral, is, again, a moral uh, case, a moral case for eliminating Hamas for the good of the Palestinian people too you got to make you got to make what they did an example mm -hmm. to the rest of the world there's no that's the only thing they understand like bibi netanyahu did a uh, uh shortly after 9-11 did a subcommittee hearing which i was a young intern and i was watching just days after 9-11 and he made the case the first time i'd ever heard it that you don't understand what you're into and you think that there are diplomatic routes here there's not there's the only thing that, that they understand is brute force and brute pain. And that's it. And that's the only thing that has kept Israel alive. We would be gone tomorrow mm -hmm. if for a moment they thought the price that they would pay was worth it. But they know it's not because they know we fight to the absolute death. And we do that over and over and over again every day. America, you don't understand that, but you're about to. And I've thought a lot about that in the 20 years after the fact. And the truth is, it still holds. And in many ways, our post 9-11 posture as a country has receded to the point where we're, we've forgotten a lot of it. Mm. And what you look at when you see something like Hamas and what they're willing to do to people, it, 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 it's, it's inhuman to say the least, but it's, but it's also, it, if, if you are an inhabitant of Earth, mm. you ought to support what you can to eliminate it from earth mm. because it will not only cause the terror that's inflicted upon the people of israel and 22 americans and people around the world the residual damage can you imagine if this happened in your community what would that make you what what would what what would we be if what happened in israel happened in our community i'll tell you what i'd be i'd be a fucking terrorist I would be a terrorist and I would dedicate my life to ending anybody who was associated with what happened to my family and what happened to my community. That's why it's so important. Mm -hmm. You have to act. You have to do. Otherwise, you just radicalize the planet. And if you can't figure out how to band together in times like this, I don't know what I got for you. You know, it certainly isn't leadership. It's not American leadership. This country was founded on that. This country was founded on a better place for people who could get along, have common goals, common opportunities amongst us to make our lives better for us and our family. And if we can't look across the planet and understand that, like, we have a role to play, then somebody else will. And you know who that is? Those are people that rape babies, mm -hmm. cut heads off kids. And we can't have it. And that's why I think Nikki Haley had the winner of the week because she was unequivocal about it. Uh, I do think there were great statements. That Burgum statement, I didn't know. That was very, very good. I thought Tim Scott had some good things to say. I thought uh, uh, the action taken by DeSantis was great. But I thought, Nikki, this plays in that first Milwaukee debate discussion where mm -hmm. she's just like barrel of the bat. Right. Very, it just feels strong. like a very, very and it's strong. not, and don't confuse it for a neocon thing. She's not talking about na nation building here. This isn't a Paul Wolfowitz, Dick Cheney view of the world where you ought to just like go in and say, Hey, democracy. And then everybody will be happy. That's not, it's not naive. And remember she was Trump's UN ambassador. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was not Donald Trump's view of the world, but also Donald Trump's view of the world was not an isolationist view as, as evidenced by what you're talking about with turning so money into salsa. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. That's not his world worldview. And so anyway, I think it's, I think it's, I think it's important stuff. Anyway, enough with the f that important stuff. I think we need to finally get to some animal news. What do you guys think? Yeah, always. Let's hear some animal news. All right, all right. So this is this is going to hit home. Dunks, are you ready for this? I've been waiting for this for a while. This is this is really going to rattle your cage because it's right in your backyard. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a loose monkey, and it rampages in Indianapolis. Yeah, it's according to Wish TV. You know Wish TV. I do. Yeah. Local affiliate there, very mm -hmm. popular. 
Uh, a monkey remained on the loose Wednesday night is in an Indianapolis neighborhood, but authorities gave up their search about two hours after it began. Uh, there was an update to this that after another sighting late Wednesday night and a third on Thursday morning, the monkey was captured. They ultimately got the monkey Momo uh, captured safely. Officers in Indianapolis, uh, the Metropolitan Police Department, are assisting Indianapolis Animal Care with services in searching for that monkey, which they ultimately found. Uh, but it was apparently rampaging throughout the city of Indianapolis, obviously up to no good, as, as Smash points out. I, I, I think this is very telling. So they said that, like, you know, uh, authorities essentially quickly caught it. Uh, it had been cited multiple times because I think what's important, you know, some background information is here we go. The tallest building in Indianapolis is two stories. That's so not it's not true. like the monkey is King Kong. It can go climb the Empire State <laughs> Building and go hide out. <laughs> this was not a King Kong you know, episode. Y- essentially, if you're near the tallest building in Indianapolis, you could snatch the monkey off the wall. So you know, maybe like it- it's not got a lot of. Of, of ground to cover <laughs> but maybe when it the looks two-story like... building is the tallest thing you've got in Indianapolis. Do you think maybe it looks like King Kong in those buildings? That's the thing. It's relative to buildings. <laughs> you know, it, it's next to the, like, Indianapolis skyscraper, which is, like, 14 feet tall. <laughs> like, it could be scary, but, like, the cops were like, oh, there's the monkey, and they just grabbed it off the wall. Can we talk for a minute about how this monkey was first spotted? The monkey was first spotted. A neighbor told police that they spotted the monkey drinking a beer from a garbage can. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Which is also like difficult because that could be your typical Indianapolis resident, right? Like oh. this is just another day in Indianapolis. <laughs> with some just... short buildings. <laughs> what is going with on this guy here? Poking. This is All just... he's doing is poking. <laughs> Unbelievable. He's trying to rile up like the old man. Our quarterback's on IR. Time for a garbage <laughs> beer, fellas. <laughs> for... Garbage team and garbage beer. It's <laughs> <Just> another day. <laughs> garbage team. <laughs> Minor injur- injuries from the monkey were reported, but police couldn't confirm if the injuries were from bites. We don't know if it was a biting monkey or just like a, you know, your average. You're running the middle garbage beer monkey. Garbage beer <laughs> monkey, just getting drunk and creating havoc. You guys waiting for me to say something? Yeah, now? come on, come on. Okay, well, first of all, <laughs> <laughs> Momo the monkey is such a strong name. <laughs> <laughs> like, I love the M alliteration there. Yeah. Like, whoever named this monkey, I, I want to shake your hand. I, I assume it was the authority. And, and, <laughs> <laughs> and the fact that the monkey is so cool that he is garbage, drinking garbage dr- beers, drinking garbage beers <laughs> is I, I mean, I think that's a badge of honor for the city of Indianapolis. But honestly, that's I mean, my like college career is drinking garbage beer. <laughs> I mean. Look, I've been to the Annapolis 500 a lot of times. I have camped out in the in the fields around, uh, you know, the track. Sure. Um, I may have seen people drinking garbage come, beers? come very close to drinking garbage beers. <laughs> you know, so maybe there's a learned activity from the people of Indianapolis. It's possible. It's possible. It's possible. People who know, who've, who've been there know it gets pretty rowdy. At if night. you know, you know, you know, you know, you get a turkey leg and. You know, turkey. throw dozen, on some throw on beers. some Skrillex and have some garbage beer <laughs> and jean shorts <laughs> and tank tops and a wicked sunburn. Um, I would just reiterate that there are many large buildings in <laughs> Indianapolis. <laughs> Fake news. I would also reiterate this monkey probably had a fantastic time in Indianapolis because it's an extremely walkable city. It is the crossroads of America. There are large corporations that make their headquarters in Indianapolis. People come from all over the country to Indianapolis. It's where the Big Ten Championship is. It's where the NCAA headquarters is. I, I and, and it's a little known fact prior to the Momo that you could actually monkey bar from the airport right downtown. I mean, that's not true at all. <laughs> they just got an airport. It's a very large city. <laughs> just drop some bananas at the taxi cab stand. You should be just fine. You should be just fine. Nothing out of you, Smash. You're going to let the old man off the hook? I just I don't like hearing uh, Indianapolis disparaged. In that this is a way. lie. Wow. <laughs> I really don't. Just, I don't. Just... I don't. I think that uh, I think given their druthers, the the good people people of Indianapolis would have come up with a the a banana pool solution. <laughs> um, but they they may not have known. 
They might not have known the monkey was on the loose. Are you saying that our listenership is so far down in Indianapolis that we they don't know about the banana pool? Well, what they might not have known was there, since there's so much good stuff going on in that city. Yeah. Oh, they might here have been we paying go. Also, attention. a wor- world class children's museum. Just like <laughs> that as well. They yeah, might have been taking their with monkey monkey garbage yeah. beers. Yeah, yeah, they were p- taking their kids to the children's museum, not paying attention to the monkey. If they knew that the monkey was on the loose, maybe you set up like a. Like a monkey alert. Well, I, if, if we sent if we if we sent the monkey to Cincinnati, it'd end up like Harambe. Oh boy! <laughs> or oh, Harambe. Well, well, we do. We protect. How, we protect our. They take care of things. We know how to. <laughs> we know how to. Well, take I'd say care that's a win dangerous. for Cincinnati. I, yeah, exactly. That'd well, be a win for Cincinnati. I think the action item here is: do not leave a sip in your beer. I yeah. think you need to finish that thing off. If not, <laughs> you will be attacked by the garbage beer monkey that is inhabiting Indianapolis. And as we've warned. It could go anywhere. Anywhere. Could go anywhere. Could be in Terre Haute. Uh, There's one more piece of animal news, fellas. The orcas are killing porpoises without eating them, and they appear to be just doing it for fun. This is from Uh, ZMEScience.com, a publication I'm unfamiliar with, but one apparently McDaniel I Listen, I I don't don't even even need to read the study to tell you exactly what I think about this. Same. Animals kill things. Yes. Okay, they're very dangerous. A killer whale kills for sport we know this they will kill people for sport if you're swimming in the area of a killer whale they will kill you <laughs> and not even eat you they're doing it to porpoises on porpoise well, they me, are on yeah, porpoise. On, they're doing it on porpoise it's on porpoise it's on porpoise you know I, I i'm gonna i'm gonna echo <laughs> what ashbrook said is because i don't care if zme science reported this i'm not gonna trust the science i'm not gonna read the article <laughs> my opinion is this we have seen orcas attacking ships Yep. People yep. consistently. Yep. You know, I remember when I was in college, I got in trouble. I was forced to take this like environmental science class, and our final paper had to be like write anything that is about the environment, and it counts as like half your grade. And so I did the right thing. I did the math. I did the research. <laughs> and if we killed every whale on Earth, <laughs> yes. and removed it from the ocean, yes. and we used them, they're renewable resources. We use them for oil and the meat, perfume, the homeless, yep. all of that. It would counter all these like left wing ideas about how how high You'd the cure, ocean levels are rising. Plus, you would cure hunger and cure hunger. Like it is almost the calculation was incredible because it's almost exactly they're like, right. oh, the oceans will rise by this much if you calculate. I'm telling you, people, if you calculate the volume of every whale, it completely counteracts the ocean level <laughs> rise. That Kill is an all, amazing math. Bring them it to is. Earth. Save humanity. It's a brilliant thought exercise and something that maybe we should actually look into. Science would benefit from even more exploration of that. But <laughs> the, the experts a- won't let you know the, that. The fact of the matter is killer whales are terrible, terrible animals. They've There's earned the documentary, name. There was a documentary made about killer whales. It was accurately titled with the wrong framing. The title is called Blackfish. The framing makes them look like the victims, and we all know the truth is the opposite. They're yeah. a killer. They're, they're a killers. Killer I just love the idea that Smug had to write like a paper on this, and he's like, I'll I'm gonna kill fl- all the animals. I'm going to flip on Avatar, and then I'm going to do the exact opposite <laughs> of that movie. <laughs> and it's like the troll. I mean, it's just so perfect. It was half my grade. I, I ended up with a C for telling the truth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, all right. So that's that. Uh, we have to get to the speaker's race. Now, this is going to be unsettled at some level. Yeah. Um, and we got to get play a game at King of the Hill. So I think we'll just co- sort of sort through what's happened on Wednesday. What happened on Wednesday is the Republican conference met, and they basically voted between Jim Jordan and Steve Scalise. Steve Scalise came on the upper hand of that. But the residual interviews by the press afterwards, and then I think subsequent vote, we'll probably see here any minute, uh, reflected the fact that there are still holdouts in terms of unanimity about who should succeed Kevin McCarthy. Um, You've got some members that are still super pissed about deposing Kevin McCarthy, and they're kind of refusing to deal with any of it. You have Ken Buck uh, yesterday, who's a very conservative member of the conference but he asked a question about is anybody going to give me what their view is of the 2020 election because he sees that as sort of a threshold issue of whether or not we are just going to be sort of a a trump template or if we're going to be you know a republican conference that pushes an agenda nobody gave him an answer and so he said he and i think a probably constituency underneath them say like we're not going to vote for anybody who can't answer that question 
uh, and then you got some people who are just dogmatically committed to Jim Jordan. Some people don't like Steve Scalise. So I think it feels like, at least to me at this point, unless we get some kind of a miracle tonight, fellas, this is going to go on for a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's not even a guarantee they vote tonight. You know, sort of conflicting reports right now as we're recording. You know, they were supposed to have a vote at 3 p.m. on Wednesday, and they hadn't. Uh, so, like, look, we don't know how long this might last. We don't know. All we know is for all of the reasons that we talked about in the previous episode, I'm fine with Steve Scalise. I'm fine with Jim Jordan. I'm fine with another dozen or two members in that conference who I think have leadership capabilities leading that conference. What is imperative here is that somebody leads this conference Mm -hmm. because you cannot have, from a Republican standpoint, a Democratic president whose policies put us in the position that we're in vis-a-vis Iran and everything else, Mm -hmm. where we're looking at a global catastrophe and yet can speak to it in a way that sounds like an adult without a counterbalance right. on the other side. You right. can't you can't have it. You can't do anything. As we noted, they can't actually bring up legislation. It doesn't even have to do with Israel or anything else. It has to do with our own domestic stuff. They can't do anything right. until they get there. Right. And like that needs to happen. Right. And I kind of don't care what your hangups are about why you can't get there. Like if you're outnumbered at this point, You got to do what's best for the party and what's best for the country. You got to get on board with somebody. From a practical standpoint, as you mentioned, Mitch McConnell, Tom Cotton have introduced the bill to stop Joe Biden from allowing that transfer to Iran of six billion dollars. Yes. From a practical standpoint, the House should have that bill up. Republicans have control of the House. They should be able to consider and vote for that on a moment's notice. Yeah. Right. There's that. Republicans are unconflicted on that subject. Yeah. But because of the dysfunction, they're not able to do it. And I just think that the, the, the longer this goes on, the smaller Republicans look because at the end of the day, voters want results. They really don't care who the leader is or who the speaker is. It just it's, it's, it feels like a it vote. Is, it feels like a vote for homecoming king. Right. And, and it's like you're doing a vote for homecoming king with the backdrop of a global catastrophe. Right. Right. And something that is focusing the human mind elsewhere, and you don't have a voice in it. Right, and I'm not saying it's not an important job. It's a very, very important job. But if you just step back away from the internal fight, which everybody gets so wrapped up in, and for good reason, if you step back from the internal fight, it is it is costing us in ways that we that 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 are hard for us to be able to understand. Like, Like I said before, like without a speaker who is leading the Republican conference in the house, we cannot have that point at, you know, the Biden administration of like, you folks are responsible for this horrible foreign policy. We have 22 Americans who've been killed, an untold number who have been taken hostage. Where are the details about what we are doing to secure the release of these folks? The families have gone and had a press conference where they said that they have had no one from the Biden administration contact them. Like if we had, a speaker of the house representing Republicans going out there and every day holding this administration accountable, it would make a tremendous difference. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and put aside the policy implications, right. And national security implications, all that stuff. And obviously that's the most important stuff, but then just think about like the political implications, like what message are you sending to the American people? The longer this whole thing yeah. drags on that, like you aren't capable of coming together and and running the house as republicans like it just doesn't reflect good on us especially at a time like this and then you had all this just sort of like circus theatrics theatrics you know when they went into the closed uh, session on uh, on on tuesday night and it's just like man it's just it's not about you like let's just yeah get members this of congress done. showing up in t-shirts to get their like shots yeah uh, nancy them. nancy mace who we we had here on the show a couple of weeks ago and i think smuggy made a great point it was like she was telling like mccarthy and leadership that she was unhappy here on our show and it seems like nobody really listened to that thing but then like she shows up with this red a on her shirt in front of all of the reporters and wants to talk about her and it's like there are like rockets going into <laughs> Israel right yeah. now. I mean, we're literally reviewing the and, images and, and coming the out. And the Biden administration yeah. has allowed this to happen. Jake Sullivan, all these people have coddled Iran. And we could have a moment where 
number one, we hold this administration accountable, but make sure that we do something about these Americans who have been killed yeah. and who are being held captive. Like, and and we don't have that opportunity to hold this administration accountable. Who throws a barbecue party yeah. after they find out America's? If I had to put it simply, I would say to Republicans who are listening to this, please just read the room. Read the room. Read the room. Like, let's be adults. Read the room. All right. So that's what we've got on that. I think it's time for a game, fellas. What yes. Do you think? Let's yes. play a game. Okay. So it is Thursday, and that can mean only one thing. King of the Hill. We are back. Uh, the last time we played uh, was at the uh, live show, the debate uh, watch party. Yeah, I was robbed. In DC. I and was robbed blind. A lot of hurt feelings, and I, you know that's a real slight to our uh, guest uh, guest host there, uh, Katie Pavlich. Well, I think she had a lot of good things to say. I respect her immensely and her judgment immensely. But I think this is, you know, look. Uh, sometimes people uh, don't act like they wow. should. And so I think, you know, that's how it is that I lost that one. Wow. But I'm the judge now. You're the judge. And you know what I'd like? Um, are you the bailiff this week? Bailiff, yeah. Uh, can I can I get like a an honorable Mr. Holmes presiding? Wow. Sure. All right. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that. Okay. All right. <laughs> that's like what that. this is about. Okay, so I have the defendant. No, absolutely. That's what this is about. I if the... I'm going to have my power, I'm going to wield it. <laughs> I have the defending champion, uh, Bill Crystal, And Smug, who are you bringing? The people's champ, Sherry Jacobus. Oh, God, Sherry, I'm a Sherry. I'm glad she's back. This will be a fun one. Oy, oy, oy. Let's go ringside. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. It's time for King of the Hill in the blue corner, fighting out of her own Twitter account. Tommy Cherry, my Cherry, Jacobus. And now, in the red corner, hiding out of Pierre Omadier's checkbook and current champion of the world, Bill War now or forever, Crystal. The Honorable James S. Holmes presiding. Ah, oh, thank you. Thank wow. you. The additional flourish. The man has every he, he has everything it, in the book, doesn't he? It's incredible. And and I just want to say before we even begin, you know, uh I was a lone voice saying that yes, you know, we have very heavy times, there are very pressing issues. We have to have King of the Hill. And <laughs> oh even my God. though this Duncan's is unbelievable. guy <laughs> had these nuclear takes, I was like, I'm gonna fight. The people deserve it, and I'm going to fight, and I'm fighting to win. You won't believe how inaccurate that backstabbing <laughs> is. Not surprisingly to our listeners, uh, Smug ridiculous. did not want to put together a show sheet. I, I, you'll see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to win unless this is rigged. Okay. okay. Oh, boy. He, right. This is, this is unbelievable. I literally can't believe it. Okay. Counselor? Okay. Um, Wolf, can I get Exhibit 6, please? We were just talking about the uh, speaker's race. This is Bill Crystal. <laughs> Bill writes, straightforward from here. One, Trump is suckered into announcing for speaker. Two, House GOP conference endorses him. Three, Jeffries, that's Hakeem Jeffries, the Democrats leader in the House, is quietly in touch with moderate R's in Biden districts who don't want to vote for Trump. They agree to support Jeffries Speaker Jeffries. <laughs> <laughs> that is his five-point plan to get a Democrat to run the House. My favorite point on that is the being in touch with the moderate Republicans in Biden districts, mm -hmm. uh, many of whom would have to hand over gavels, meaning that they would no longer be in charge of right. committees. They would hand it over to their Democratic counterpart what an incentive yes to go ahead and work with the democratic side what, what was it the date on that was what october 5th is that permissible we're rolling with that that's cool oh yeah we're gonna right. do we're yeah. gonna do what do you mean no i mean this is a, that's october six 5th. that's six days seven, from when we're from recording the show seven from the tomorrow 12th, as everyone seven, knows so that's seven days do you right. not just account make, just making sure it, it, just making sure in fact uh bailiff i don't know if this is in your territory i think it's in Okay. Bailiff says it in, and if it's in with the bailiff, it's in with the judge. Can I? Uh, can I? We got the mail in ballots going. It's going to be a, a rowdy one. Can I point out one other thing here that I just love, and this is classic Bill Crystal, is like in a week 
he couldn't have been proven more wrong <laughs> on nearly every one of these points. And he says it with such authority, and that's why I love him as a contestant in this oh, game. It's so It's so good. That was a very quality entry. Uh, All so right. I like to immediately get into mine because I think it's a perfect foil. It's, Please. Bill Crystal couldn't know, essentially, what Duncan said. He would have a bad take. The beauty of Sherry's take here is What exhibit is this, Counselor? It was going to be terrible. This is Exhibit 7. This is in the thick of it. This is not like I had a bad prediction that I knew could go wrong. This is, I know this is a horrible take. Sherry Jacoba says, the GOP presidential primary is pure garbage. People you'd never invite to a social gathering in your home. Disturbing weirdos. Congress too. No one wants the job unless they are psychopaths, criminals, and militant or religious <laughs> fanatics and extremists. Now, folks, I think given what we have seen over the past week, have we seen who the psychopaths and the fanatics are. Wait, wait, hold, hold on. This is 15 hours. This, that's 15 hours ago? That's the beauty of it is while Crystal a week ago had a take that ends up looking bad, Sherry's like, I have a bad take after I have the facts. Wait, 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 <laughs> wait, wait, wait. This this is going to hold some water with yeah. the judge. We are talking about 15 years ago. 15 hours, 15 hours. 15 this, hours ago. Yeah. We're talking about her saying she has all militant or religious fanatics and extremists, and she's talking about people running for president? Yeah, this? she's talking about the Republicans as opposed to, like, every major organization, left-wing organization in this country who's had to apologize being like— Can I pop, can I you pop this back. back up? I need to see what the retweet. It appears to me that she has quote-tweeted herself, and she has, and she has. So I, although uh, counsel didn't bring that up, that yeah. also holds yep. weight. Uh, and it appears— uh, it's an amazing take, dude. Uh, okay, yeah, I'm. I'm not gonna. It's not. It's not admissible for the purposes of my consideration, but it's important for the context of what she ultimately said. Can we pop the first exhibit back up from Duncan? Exhibit six, because I feel like this is an absolute uh, nail biter here. Um. This, I, I qualify, is an almost like Jennifer Rubin-like brain worms take in that you're going to have Republicans that ultimately support a Democrat for speaker uh, for some on God n reason that has nothing to do. It's But it's also sort of Sorkin-esque. In, it in is Sorkin-esque. There is a the, flair for it. Maybe a yeah. Steve Schmidt ty it's, style. It, it's just brain worms wish casting for like a script for a movie or a TV show. God, it's so good. It's so good. But the idea that we are talking about religious extremists on the day that we're looking at video of Hamas killing people in Israel and she's describing that, that's that's going to win for me. I'm going to go with Sherry. Smug, you got it. I respect your decision. Judge, honorable. Thank you, sir. Uh, Smug, you may proceed. Can I get uh, Exhibit 8? Can, can we pause for one second? Oh, what do we have? Oh, here comes, I just, here comes the... Stop the steal. No, I just... Like, stop the steal. I love that before we... I just want our fans to know, before we recorded, Smug was complaining they didn't have enough takes, and he has eight exhibits. <laughs> <laughs> There's eight... There's eight exhibits. I'm sorry, Paul. Go, go, go right ahead. That's funny, though. That is very funny. <laughs> this is more fake news. <laughs> this is Exhibit 8. We can get it up there. Eight. If, if Duncan isn't trying to steal this anymore. Uh, Sherry Jacoba says, I'm gaining oh, over 1,000 no. followers on threads each day the past few days and losing at least 100 a day on Twitter. I engage Twitter more than threads, but that is changing. She's like, <laughs> I have these terrible takes and people are leaving. What's happening? Also, is it true that, there's, that, that basically, despite their massive rollout, that Threads is unused? Yeah. Basically. Yeah, I mean, it's the, the like traffic on there has basically fallen apart because everyone knows Twitter's where the game. It's is. like unused, right? Because yeah. like this is where the wolves play. Yeah. And that's where you guys, <laughs> She's you guys like, show up. Where I put my takes, people hate it and leave. What's happening? <laughs> Why are they leaving my takes? <laughs> I use it more, and I'm losing it. Okay. All right. I like it. Duncan, what do we got? Uh, let's go to exhibit five. 
This is uh, Bill Crystal. <laughs> not, not to go all Marxist oh, or anything, Jesus. but the degree to which Trump and Trumpism attend to this, the interests of the oligarchs is underappreciated. No. In some ways, the puzzlement about, quote, why are the donors going along with all with it all is silly. The answer is because they benefit from it. Cool. This the reason why I love this. Number one, the not to go Marxist or anything. It's like, bro, that time passed you a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, pal, you're there. The call is coming from inside the house. But what I love about this is Bill Crystal's entire life is funded by left wing Billion- oligarchs. Billionaires. His entire livelihood depends upon serving the interests of the left-wing oligarch donor class that's literally why he's allowed to do all of this shit that's such a weak take really that's that's the best no you had, dude? <laughs> here and again that's it? again i you can pop this back up on the screen i need to i need to point out something that's very very important for the context of the audience is that his retweet yes his Wait, reach. it's not admissible. Stop the steal. No, I'm not. Stop I, the steal. I, again, <laughs> as, I, the steal. as I did with your previous take, the context for what he is tweeting is very important. I'm not going to quote it, but I, what he's quoting is a story from this person, I don't know, uh, talking about how the Trump administration has targeted, the IRS had targeted low-income families. I find that fascinating right. because that has been the case for every IRS. And that was the argument the Republicans made against the 80,000 new IRS tax agents. And, and, and auditing, like, Venmo transactions. So now it is admissible. So Stop I think that the, that context into why the donors are going along with it all is completely hilarious for that reason, but more importantly, the reason that the donors actually aren't going along with it yeah. all. If there's one class in America within the Republican Party that is not going along with Trump... It is the donor class, and they are very vehemently not going on. It is absolute abject lie, and for that reason, Bill Crystal kicks round two. Well, it fixes in. Let's Here we go. go. It fixes in. Let's go to round three. I can't believe the fi- fixes it, in. It's okay. This is incredible. It's, it's admissible sometimes, not sometimes. You but ga- it's okay. You gave you fixes gave in. me you the bill and ballots are hidden. A very milk toast, <laughs> Sherry Jacobus, and now you're complaining about it. Look, let's go. Let's get to okay. the next. Okay. Um, oh, it's a good thing I saved a nuke here. <laughs> Exhibit four, please, Wolf. Bill Crystal writes, Oh, God. Shouldn't Liz Liz Cheney be speaker until the end of the 118th Congress? My God. Pro-democracy in an election year, knows foreign policy in a world in turmoil, will support Biden administration when appropriate, and step up when they're lacking. 180 Dems and 20 Republicans could make it happen. (laughs) Oh, How old is that? What was this that? is October seventh. Oh, that's why so old. All right, it's, it's a boring so take. old. Boring take. It's from four days ago. Boring take. It's also completely diametrically opposed to this other tweet that we literally played in this game. The this Jeffries. guy, this guy, just is embrace. Like that's not admissible. I I think that's not part of the tweet, dude. This is a separate round. Well, I appreciate the wish casting, and and frankly, I'll I'll cut the jabber between counsel well, here. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I thought maybe I thought perhaps the playing. bailiff would jump in. But the if only I'm point have to the do only it. point I want to make here is that Bill Crystal has really embraced his role as just a poster. Like he just puts out content. Now. He's a content guy. He doesn't care. No, that he tweeted two days prior that Hakeem Jeffrey should be speaker and the moderate Republicans should flip and support him. Content. Then guy. it's like Liz Cheney. It's like he's just. I got it. Everything against the wall. I got it. I got it. Yeah. Uh, let's go Old to Old microwave takes. Can I get Exhibit Ten? <laughs> Let me wake everybody up. Hold well on. You've got ten got exhibits. Ten. <laughs> ten. We're going to ten. Exhibit Ten. Oh, it's so good. In the preparation. <laughs> So much better than I imagined. So here's the beauty of this one, folks. It says this was from an hour ago. No, no, no. In no, in in no. light of our recent events of no. BLM being pro like anti Semitism genocide. No. Sherry Jacobus says President Trump described a, a national blood testing program for medical reasons. She says a quote blood purity program, Holocaust expert on why Trump is stoking fears of national blood poisoning. Oh. This is insane. <laughs> wait, wait, Your Honor. Your but she's Honor, just quoting an article. Yeah, Your Honor. I I believe that we should at least get a summary of the headline and the subhead. I'm going are. to pull. Do we, up, re- we don't need a book, bro. Hold like on. that's the thing. Is judges I, judges reviewing? I, I think the, I think the, that we should the, know. the the 
article itself is a blood purity program, Holocaust expert on why Trump is stoking fears of national poisoning. That is in So fact, she just wrote the headline. Wrote the headline. That's another win. Oh, oh, that's smug. another win. Smug knows he's been found no, out. No, that's another win. Now that now that I was I was very prepared to award her an absolute unequivocal win. Now I see that then all, it had to be stolen. All she has done is reposted the title of an absolutely insane salon post. I can't go any further. That alone Bamboo fibers are everywhere. This is the most <laughs> rigged, stolen. That alone gives Michael the victory. Congratulations, you retake Let's the go. title. Let's go. Let's go. I'd feel- be happy to know that next week you don't have to actually pull. This anything. is so rigged. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Nick, for designing ten exhibits for Smug for this game. <laughs> really, I appreciate. I can't, it. I can't believe ten exhibits. Did yeah. you have? Did you have more than ten? No, you- no. You amateurs don't understand. It's a sequential number from the beginning to the bottom. So like his is one, two, three, four, five, six, amateurs seven, eight. Amateurs don't. And understand. that's the thing is, is yet again I'm being punished for being right. Oh, you have you had seven, eight, nine, exactly. ten. Okay, all right. So, but sorry, it, but sorry. It's okay. you had three exhibits. We had, no, I apologize. We had a rigged court. It's a kangaroo court, but I will still fight for the people. I did not. Uh, I continue make to fight. any rulings on the basis of your adequate or inadequate preparation. I, I actually saw respected how you it. Prepared. I thought I thought maybe you were rope a dope in me. And and you just came with like tons of material. Yet again, speaking for the people gets you crucified. <laughs> <laughs> we do have to introduce our audience now that you mentioned his name to the newest member of the team, That's Nick. That's right. Uh, he's on board behind the desk and running stuff around here. Wolf's got him under his thumb. Seems like he's really driving a serious bargain over there. Uh, but I will say I love him. Uh, great work. He was at our first live event. He's been doing stuff ever since. You guys are going to get to know him. Once we nickname him something, you're going to hear a lot more about it. But uh, until then, there's the the hats off. Fellas, I think we did it. I think so. Absolute banger of an episode, gentlemen. Thank you so much to Arminians. And again, a reminder, if you subscribe on YouTube, you can see it all happen on screen. So until next time, Minions, keep the faith, hold the line, and own the libs. We'll see you on Tuesday. Stay ruthless.